So you want to change from one texture to another, and you want the new texture to expand outward from any location you tap. And for whatever reason, you can't use the lightweight render pipeline. So open Shader Forge. Make a new shader, lit PBR, and start by deleting everything. Make two Texture 2D properties. Name them Diffuse 1 and Diffuse 2. To determine which texture is displayed, use a linear interpolation node. You want the T values to represent a sphere and world space. Make a world position node. Then make a vector 4 property and name it position. This position will be the origin of the effect. The distance from the origin to all the world positions will generate a spherical gradient. To make this easier to visualize, do the same thing in a two-dimensional UV space. Make a UV node, then make a vector 2 node set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which is the center of a UV square. The distance from the center to all of the pixels is displayed as a radial gradient. Here's a graph. The horizontal axis represents distance from the center. The vertical axis is the value assigned to the distance. The low values close to the center are displayed as black pixels. As the distance increases, the pixels get brighter. There's actually no upper limit, but you can use the lower limit of zero as a threshold. Subtract from the distance to darken all of the pixels and push the values below zero. The amount you subtract will represent the radius of the sphere. Negate will invert all values so that subtraction will push values above 1. Lerp expects values between 0 and 1, so make sure to clamp the result. Optionally, make a sign node, which is like an extreme clamp that sets all values above 0 to 1 and all values below 0 to negative 1. Now that you see how the gradient works, replace the UV distance with the world position distance. Time to animate the radius of the sphere. Make a time node. Make a value property and name it start time, and subtract start time from time. Clamp the result and connect it to another lerp node. The inputs for the lerp node are the radius of the sphere. Warning, this is hard coded. You might want to make these values properties instead. Connect the diffuse texture to albedo. In the lighting panel on the left, change the mode from metallic to specular. This is a physically based shader, so you will need to create texture nodes for smoothness and normals. All lerp nodes will be driven by the same radius. That's all the nodes. Go into the shader settings and remember to check iOS Metal. And take a moment to reorder the properties too. Compile the shader and close Shader Forge. Make a new material and assign the shader you just made. Since you didn't assign any default textures in the shader, make sure you assign some in the material here. You can now assign this material to any 3D meshes you want. Next, create a C-sharp script. The goal here is to tell the shader exactly where in world space you want the effect to happen, and when you want the effect to happen. These commands will cast a ray from the mouse pointer. If you're making a VR game, you might want to cast from a VR wand instead. If the ray hits something that has a collider, then get the material. So declare material. Now by default, Unity will create material instances for every object that has a material, but if you used shared material, then you'll get the master material. Set the shader property position with the hit point. This is a position in world space where the effect is going to happen. Then set the property start time with time since level load. This is the same thing as time in the shader. And that's pretty much all you need to start the effect. 
The rest of this tutorial is going to go over getting the textures from various materials. Assign the script to a manager game object, then assign some materials to the material array. By default, these materials are using Unity's standard shader, so make your own PBR shader instead. Get rid of everything except base color and normal map, then create a property for smoothness. Change the type from metallic to specular. Remember to check iOS Metal. And reorder the properties. Take note of the reference name of each property. Now assign the shader to each material. Return to the C-sharp script. Declare some integers to help you iterate through the array. Then declare some texture variables, one for each type of texture, two diffuse textures, two smooth textures, two normal textures. Get the first diffuse, smooth, and normal textures from the material that you hit. These are the textures that are currently visible, but are about to get covered up by the effect. Get the second diffuse, smooth, and normal textures from the PBR shader you just made. Remember the reference name for each type, in this case, main text, smooth, and bump map. Increase the wall index so that the next time you click, you'll get a new material. Finally, set each texture property, each diffuse, each smooth, and each normal. That's it, run the game. You can select the materials to watch the colors swap on the right. Every game object with the material assigned is being affected. However, you can create multiple materials and as long as you limit each game object to one material per game object, you can separate your scene into multiple materials. Finally, this noodle graph in ShaderForge would probably look something like this in Unreal's Material Editor.